So I recently just watched a movie called Final Fantasy Advent Children, which is a full CG movie released in 2005. And disclaimer, I've never seen a single Final Fantasy movie before this. In fact, the only real exposure I've had to this franchise was when I played Final Fantasy XV almost eight years ago. So other than that, I don't know anything about this series. So you may ask, why have I decided to get into this series now? And why did I decide to watch a movie that was made 20 years ago? Well, it's simple. It's because I'm fascinated by the technology used to bring this entire world to life. You see, I like to analyze full CG movies because I've been a 3D artist for the past four years and I absolutely nerd out over this stuff. So buckle up as I take you through a review and analysis of Final Fantasy Advent Children through the eyes of a CG artist. Here's a brief history. The Final Fantasy series was created in Japan in 1987, a time where technology was not good enough to convey the vastness and vision of massive fictional worlds. Yet Final Fantasy was still able to captivate an audience inside and outside of Japan. Ten years later, Final Fantasy VII was released on the PlayStation, selling over 9 million copies, making it one of the most popular games of all time. Even after the game was fully concluded, fans still wanted more. And they waited, and waited, until finally, Final Fantasy VII returned. Not as a game though, but as a movie, released in 2005. Titled Final Fantasy Advent Children. Directed by Tetsuya Nomura and Takeshi Nozuo. Now here's where it gets interesting for me. They are about to make a full feature-length CG movie with human characters. This was a very difficult project they had ahead of them. The only CG movie similar to the one they were about to make was made in 2001, called Final Fantasy The Spirits Within, directed by the creator of Final Fantasy, Hironobu Sakaguchi. I don't know why I sounded Italian there, but he's Japanese. This was a standalone movie, by the way. It had no ties to the original story of Final Fantasy, I think. I haven't seen it yet, but I know that it flopped in the box office. They used 960 computers as a render farm to render each of the films 141,000 frames. Anyways, we're not talking about that movie. Although I can make a whole video on that movie separately, but for now, we're talking about Advent Children. The point is, there was a lot of pressure for the Advent Children crew to make a good and profitable movie. So they started working on the movie, using the highest level of technology developed by Square Enix. Basically, they coded their own software from scratch in order to create the world that they pictured in their heads. Specifically, the software developed was for the hair, fabrics, and custom shaders for the characters. However, they did use Maya for the character animation and rigging. But I can confidently say the art style of those characters like Cloud and Tifa had never been done before. The modeling of the eyes and hair was all very unique. You know, the common spiky-haired anime protagonist look, except in 3D form. I think rendering realistic hair is notoriously difficult even today and Advent Children had some of the best hair physics of the time. They used a physics-based approach to simulate how hair moves, which was quite innovative back then. I'm pretty sure Cloud's spiky hair alone caused a few animators to pull out their own hairs in frustration. I know this because I still struggle to create realistic hair myself in Blender. What the f is that? Okay, so my favorite part of this movie has to be the fight sequences. Nobody can do better fight sequences than the Japanese. It's just that certain fast-paced action style that the Japanese have pioneered, and it can only be done in animated form. Because I'm not gonna lie, doing it in a live-action setting just ends up looking a bit goofy and corny. Here's a quote by the director talking about people who don't like action sequences like this. <laughs> I love the Japanese. If it looks cool, they'll use it. They would use unrealistic camera movements and angles that weren't possible in real life. And why? Because they didn't want to copy other film styles. This film was based on a video game, so they wanted to innovate and do things that were their own. And thus, that's why you see all these crazy, unrealistic camera movements in today's popular shows. A lot of it was inspired by this movie. Or at least that's what I like to say. The only live action feature film that I think did a good job replicating this type of action was Superman Man of Steel. 
those action sequences at the end were quite anime-esque and done very well in terms of the VFX. So each character model in Advent Children was meticulously crafted. The detail in their hair, clothes, and especially their facial expressions was revolutionary. To put things into perspective, the average polygon count for a character in the movie was around 20,000 polygons. Compare that to video game characters of the same era, which had around 5,000 polygons, and you can see the leap in detail and complexity. Okay, now let me ask you a question. What do all movies with extensive CG scenes with CG characters like to do during the filming process? I'll give you a few seconds. The answer is motion capture. So they did do some motion capture for this film to get animation data for the more heartfelt moments in the movie. Having some motion capture data from the actors can really help streamline the animation process. And as filmmakers, I think if you have the budget to do so, you should do it. Okay, moving on to the environment design. My favorite environment in the movie has to be the city of Midgar. I like to think that someone at Square Enix has the entire model of the city saved on their computer somewhere. <laughs> the level of detail in these environments was achieved through a combination of matte paintings and 3D models. They used a technique called global illumination to create realistic lighting that interacts with the characters and environments. You can probably find the setting in most modern 3D softwares, but for 2005, this was cutting edge technology. So what does this all mean for us today? Well, Advent Children set a benchmark for CG movies, especially in Japan. Cause at the time, CG movies were only popular in Hollywood. It showed what was possible with the technology at the time. For us 3D artists, it's a reminder of how far we've come and how much further we can go. However, I would say the movie itself fell flat on most of the first half, especially the dialogue scenes. The dialogue scenes, I would say, were pretty dull. If you tried watching this movie as someone with hardly any prior knowledge of the games, like me, then you're gonna be pretty confused throughout the entire movie. But that's not to say that this movie didn't have heart. It had heart. The character of Cloud Strife is haunted by guilt and grief over the deaths of his friends. His journey in the movie can be seen as him seeking redemption and atonement for his past actions. And I felt that relief during that beautiful scene at the end. So, in conclusion, who is this movie for? Well, if you're a CG enthusiast and a 3D animation student like me, and you want to get into the world of Final Fantasy, then this movie is for you. It's a piece of CG history. The techniques and technologies used in the creation of this film have influenced countless projects since then. And in the end, this movie ended up making me feel something. And now, I want to watch more of the Final Fantasy movies after this one. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to see more content like this. Until next time, I'll see y'all later. Peace.